Hello, my name is David Graham. I'm a professor of medicine at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. I've been working in the helicobacter field since basically the beginning. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, how do you approach the patient and to tell them what kind of disease this is and why that they should be concerned and why they should undergo therapy and, and participate in the worldwide eradication of this infection so that we can eliminate some major gastrointestinal diseases. Today I'm going to discuss some of the features of Helicobacter pylori infection and how we approach patients to tell them that this is an important disease and something that they need to be tested for and if they have it, why they, they should be treated even if they have no symptoms. I start by explaining this is an infectious disease. This is caused by bacteria. And this bacterium only infects people. It's been with people for a long time, in fact, as long as there have been people. And it causes progressive damage to the stomach. It causes inflammation of the stomach, so it causes chronic inflammation. It's typically acquired in childhood, often actually from the mother. And then you have it for the rest of your life. And while it's in the stomach, even if it's causing no symptoms, it's causing inflammation, which causes progressive damage and can lead to gastric atrophy. Importantly, it's associated with disease. And there are both gastric diseases and duodenal diseases and diseases that are not even infected in the stomach but that occur elsewhere in the body that are actually caused by this infection. Now, who gets it? What's the epidemiology? And the answer is everyone can get it, but it's particularly common in, in areas with less adequate sanitation. So crowded living conditions, sharing the bed as a child, absence of hot water in the, in the family, the poor sanitary conditions. But however, it's a human disease. And even if you're the richest guy with everything that you want in life, you can still be infected by this organism. So uh, we look for it in every part of society. Now, what does it cause? Well, as I said, it causes progressive gastric and duodenal damage. And, and this disorders the regulation of acid secretion. So normally, instead of just responding to the meal and the acid secretion coming up and going down when it's appropriate, it, it now is disordered. And that leads to disease. And the most interesting disease that early on was duodenal ulcer. In fact, they thought it was a genetic disease. And a tremendous effort was putting in understand acid secretion turned out that all those abnormalities of acid secretion were reversible and they were due to the infection. The other problem that it caused, an even more important disease, was gastric cancer. Uh, and uh, this is an important worldwide disease that we'll discuss. It can cause lymphoma of the stomach. This is often one that can be treated with antibiotics. And as I said, it causes atrophy of the stomach and atrophy can be associated with malabsorption of iron or B12 uh, and even outside diseases, blood diseases like uh, thrombocytopenia, idiopathic <clears throat> thrombocytopenia can be caused by this infection. Now, what's your chances of getting a disease if you're infected? Well, your chance of getting a peptic ulcer disease is about 17%. One in six will ultimately get a peptic ulcer. And years ago, uh, they said peptic ulcers was incurable. Once an ulcer, always an ulcer. But this is no longer considered true because once it was discovered it was caused by this infection, we could actually cure it. And so you only needed one ulcer. Gastric cancer, commonly said 1% risk, but it can be much higher depending upon where you live. And I'll show you some of that data later. And then as we, we stated, iron deficiency, very common problem worldwide. And, and, and this is one of the causes. B12 deficiency, particularly in older people because of loss of, of gastric function. And then even malabsorption of drugs that may be useful for the patient, such as thyroid, or for our patients with, uh, with Parkinson's disease, L-DOPA. Now, gastric cancer is the focus of many eradication schemes because it's a very common disease. Up until 1930, it was the most common cancer. And then smoking and, and cigarettes uh, of cigarettes uh, led to gastric, uh, not to get 
But then smoking led to lung cancer, and lung cancer uh, was passed, gastric cancer, in the United States in about 1975. Still a very common cause of cancer with a million deaths per year worldwide. And 95% are caused by this infection. No infection, no gastric cancer. Eradication of the infection before atrophy sets in can markedly reduce the risk of cancer and actually prevent it. So what do I tell the patient who says, I, I have the infection, I'm having no symptoms, I shouldn't have to worry about this. And I tell them that it's actually impossible to predict the future. We don't know what's going to happen to them, but we do know it's a progressive disease, and it's generally not reversible. The damage when it becomes atrophy is atrophy, and I can cure it. It's a bacterial infection, and like many other bacterial infections, we treat it with antibiotics. Importantly, they are the carrier. It's a transmissible disease. All through life, uh, it's transmissible. And so, therefore, it's important to remember that you're carrying it to transmit it to your children and grandchildren and wife, etc. And there's absolutely no positive benefit to having the infection, either to the patient or to society as a whole. So I tell them that it, it's a silent disease. It's long, latent period. But during that time, it's destroying the stomach. So it's silently doing damage and that it can have these bad outcomes, but that we can cure it anytime we decide by appropriate antibiotics. And I use an analogy, and that's an analogy that they have gastric termites. You know, if you have termites in your porch or your house, uh, even when you see them and you don't see much damage, you know they're causing damage. And this is the same way in your stomach. It's causing this silent damage that can suddenly appear as a gastric cancer. Now, gastric cancer risk, again, varies in countries. And you see this list is the cumulative lifetime risk to age 75 years for men. And, and, and remarkable differences. In this one area in China, it's 19% risk. In, in Japan, 10 to 12 percent risk, lifetime risk. Korea, very high risk. But there's no country that has zero risk. As long as you have this infection, you're going to have a risk of gastric cancer. And it relates to the risk of having atrophic gastritis and the amount of damage that goes on the stomach. And those relate in part to the strain of the infection and to the presence of what kind of diet that you might eat. Now, the global consensus was done on Helicobacter, and this was in 2015, and, and a group of experts got together and for the first time actually defined H. pylori gastritis, this histological disease, as an infectious disease. And they said even when patients have no symptoms or no complications, they have this infectious disease. Now, if they have that infectious disease, they should be offered eradication. There is exceptions. People that have competing considerations, for example, they have some other serious life-threatening disease uh, that, that, or they have 90, they're 95 years old and there's limited life expectancy, so the risk of the therapy may outweigh the benefit that that individual will get. But we do know that whenever we undergo H. pylori eradication, we reduce the risk of gastric cancer. And we can predict, in part, how much risk reduction we get. So if the patient has no atrophy, we can prevent it. And then if they have atrophy, depending on the severity and the extent, uh, we can reduce the rate of gastric cancer, but we may not be able to prevent it entirely. And therefore, we focus on getting to those patients very early and, and preventing it forever for those individuals. In summary, H. pylori is a serious, chronic, and transmissible infectious disease that causes progressive damage to the stomach, damages both the structure and the function, and worldwide is a major cause of morbidity and mortality. The prevalence of H. pylori in any population is inversely related to the general health and well-being of the society. So the most prosperous societies have a lower rate but they don't right now have zero rate, and so we go after every population. But no matter which population, the infection should be eradicated because it's doing damage to the individual 
and to the population. And we want everyone to get involved, to diagnose this disease, eradicate it, and to be like smallpox, a historical disease that's the only interest to historians and not something that's influencing our life today.